Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, and that means having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? And a further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Now also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle. In this school, we show proof how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually ex exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Five is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations and time. Eight to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Tonight we'll have a prayer by Bruce Geller. We'll have a scripture read by Jerry Geller, which will be announced. It will be John, the fifth chapter, verses 17 through uh, 47. Let us all bow our hearts and minds. Yahweh, we are very appreciative again that you have given us this opportunity to learn about you and come into a greater knowledge and understanding of you and your son, Yahshua the Messiah. We want to thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask you to keep us strong in this doctrine and in this teaching, help us in our everyday life. Ask us, I mean, ask us. Um, help us look towards you in all things, both physical and spiritual. We ask you to help us to stand strong in you and be faithful. And we ask you to help us realize how far you have brought us and how much we have to be thankful for and grateful 
to you for. And we ask you to help us, keep us from uh, self-deception or deception of any kind. We ask you to help us to deal with that and to <clears throat> uh, cleave unto you. Look towards you and everything. And all these blessings we ask you for and thank you for in Yahshua's holy name, let us all say, Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Tonight I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, John, the fifth chapter, verse 17 through 47. But Yahshua answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because they contended that he not only had broke the Sabbath, but said also that Elohim was his father, making himself equal with Elohim. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and giving giveth them life even, so the Son giveth life to those that believe in him. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father, that honoreth not the Son, he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and live, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing. As I am taught of my Father, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, ye will say, The witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works I do, and they bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. But ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another? and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had you believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words?
Our first speaker this evening will be Bruce Geller. Thank you. I don't know why, but I'm glad to be here. And uh, let's see. Um, I should have expected it, but you know, you, <laughs> you never know when you're going to be called. But uh, it is an honor to be called, believe me. Uh, I wanted to get that scripture where Yahshua said, you receive uh, honor from man and not from Yahweh. See, this is very extremely important. Because if you're looking for honor of men, you come to the wrong place. Because we're not promoting that, and we're not, we're not into that. Now, do we respect men? Disrespect, I should say? No. But we don't place man above our creator. Because for one thing, man can't hand out eternal life. And uh, I want Jeremiah 9.23 also along with that, because they kind of go together. Yahshua was telling those people back there that you're not, he was talk, who was he talking to? The scribes and Pharisees? Talked to them a lot. Or was it just the uh, John 5, where, uh, who was he talking to there? He gave some real, real good advice to people. He told them not to be worried about honor of men. And I didn't ever think that that was anything that would bother me. And yet, it has a way of creeping up and raising its ugly face. And maybe we should uh, further define what we mean by uh, honor of men. First of all, can you get John, the fifth chapter, where Yahshua talks about... How can you receive honor one of another? Yahshua is asking this question to them, right? How is it that you can receive honor one of another? And receive not the honor that cometh from Yahweh only. Now, Yahshua just said that if you want some kind of honor, some kind of, uh, well, what's the first thing you think of when you think of honor? Not that we're going to use that as our definition, but just to show you that we don't, a praise, respect, respect, right? Now, Yahshua could not be kind. You know what I mean by that? In other words, you could pat him on the back all day and try to smooth him down, you know, but it wouldn't do any good because he wasn't looking for honor of men, respect of men, nor did he care what man thought. And uh, that's a tough one. I understand that because we hold our thoughts in very high esteem. But when you realize that we don't think anything uh, like the Creator does, and you say, well, so what? We're not supposed to. Well, I'm here to tell you and can prove to you that, yes, we are supposed to think like the Creator. Oh, boy. That, that should get some people you know, hopping, you know, because I, I didn't think that was possible when I came in here. I thought, well, maybe I can learn something about him, but you mean I could have the same mind that Yahshua was walking around with? Read, uh, before you get the last scripture that I had, get Philippians 2 and 5. Now, Paul was, uh, when we read Paul's writings, we're reading about someone that was taken up to the third heaven. You had it read the other night, where he had a divine vision and revelation from the Creator, just as our founder did and claims to have done, was receive a divine vision and revelation from Yahweh. Now, I know when I first came into class, I wouldn't have known a divine vision and revelation had it smashed me in the face. I wouldn't have known what it was. Never thought of it. Never knew that it had anything to do with anything. Vision. What's a vision in the Revelation? Now, 
Read uh, Philippians 2 and 8, I think it is, or 2 and 5. Two and five. Now, here's one for you folks that I didn't think. There's a lot of things, by the way, in the Bible that you may not have known that were there. I can certainly tell you that that's uh, my testimony. I had no idea that some of these things were in the Bible. Wait a minute. You mean it's possible to have the mind of the Messiah or his characteristics in you, his character in you, the way that he, he is, his nature, can be in us. And when you see what kind of nature that we're dealing with here, you want it in you. You want that. You should want it. And it's possible to have it. Now read uh, Philippians. And I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, this is not the only place in the book where it talks about uh, being a recipient of Yahweh's thoughts. In order to be a recipient of his thoughts, you have to be a recipient of his Holy Spirit, which he's giving out, folks. He's handing it out to whomsoever he wills. He's doing that now, and he's done it before. In the beginning of this age, which is known as uh, Pentecost in A.D. 33, he poured his spirit out, and these people that received his spirit were, as Dr. Kinley said, no more were they the same. That was his testimony when he turned to his wife after he received this divine vision and revelation. He said, Katie, he said, I'm never no more, and I'm, 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 I'm uh, slicing up the English, but I'll, I'm no more, I'm never going to be the same. Right? I'll never be the same again because of what Yahweh showed him. And that should be our testimony, too that we're not the same that we were before. We have something to live for now, folks. Um, read Philippians 2 and, is it 5? 5, yes. Okay, Vic. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahshua the Messiah. Let this what? Mind. Mind? Wow. Did you know that was in the book before you came in here, that it was possible to... To have the mind of the Messiah. Now, out in the world, they're trying to give you something else beside the mind. Did you know that? When was the last time you went to communion and they told you, Dennis, when you were in the Roman Catholic Church, that today you're, we are going to, uh, you are going to be recipients of the mind of the Messiah? Is that what they, that what they gave you? Instead, they gave you. Because in the book, the Messiah does talk about eating his flesh and blood, which those people back there didn't understand what he meant, nor do they understand now what he meant when he said that you have to drink my blood and eat my flesh. Whoa. Now, those things can be explained. Really, what they have to eat, folks, and what we have to eat, and it's a toughie, is his words. That's, right. That's what you have to eat. Mm -hmm. And you know that you do eat words all the time. You say, no, I don't. I haven't had alphabet soup in my whole life. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about eating soup now. I'm talking about food for thought. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called, food for thought. Mm -hmm. Right? Let me have uh, Jeremiah 3. Before we get Jeremiah 9, I want... Jerry, you know where it is, don't you? I should give you pastors. Jeremiah 9 and 23, I think. I never thought about any of this stuff. No, that's not it. It's Jeremiah 3 and... Diane, in there, it, it'll yeah. tell you that should, if you're looking, look under feed. feed. Although it's probably tons of, of different scriptures for feed. But... Folks, if there wasn't something important, and I mean really important, about Yahshua's words, about being a partaker of the words that he speaks. Now, he himself said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, I want to ask you this. If you hope to have life, Diane, mm -hmm. did 
Did you know that there's a connection between you having life and you being able to receive his words? In other words, you've got to eat them. Right. And sometimes eating his words uh, can be bitter, but once they get down in there, they, they heal and they are sweet. may not taste so good at first. Uh, read... Uh, so in Philippians we read, let this mind be in you, right? So it's possible. Now, I asked you for another one, and it was Jeremiah. 3 and 15. That's it. I knew it was in the early part of Jeremiah. Now, watch this. Just in case you think that, oh, those are lovely words, you know, about eating your words, but you can't substantiate that, especially in the Bible. Oh, no. We love challenges. We don't mind them at all. We, we love them. We're, we'll take them on. Read Jeremiah 3 and 15. 15, yes. Read it. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. No, if you want a good pastor, you better get a, a either look in the yellow pages or, or maybe if you want a pastor uh, and you want to be fed, where do you go? Where would you go? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. Keep on reading. I will give you pastors according to my heart. This is Yahweh speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, Yahweh Elohim, right? I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall do what? Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, to a carnal mind, that means nothing. It really doesn't mean anything because if you're carnally minded, and that's the only level that you can think on, then you want to be fed, not with knowledge and understanding, but some meat and potatoes maybe, you know, something physical. But no, we're instructed that Yahweh, or we are told in the book of Jeremiah, that Yahweh will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And folks, that's exactly what he's done. He's doing it now. He's been doing it right along. Now, there's another scripture, and I'll be darned if I know where this is. I know where it is on the page. It says, how, we, how may we instruct the mind of Yahweh? That's, that's, a, it. that's in 1 Corinthians. That's, you're on my train of thought. 1 Corinthians, the third, I think it's 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Now here's Paul again. Now first he said, let this mind be in you, Right? Let this mind be in you. Had anybody ever told you anything like that before you came into class that you needed to get, a, to get in touch with somebody else's mind? What's wrong with mine? It isn't going to do. 2.16 of 1 Corinthians. You know why my mind isn't going to do, or yours? Because the natural carnal mind doesn't know anything about Yahweh. We need help, folks. That's right. We need divine intervention, as they would say. Right? right? We need help. And there isn't a darn thing admitting it. Mm -hmm. It is not anything to be ashamed of. In fact, Yahweh really gets off, if I can use that term, digs, likes, a humble attitude. Mm -hmm. Not one that can be faked, mind you. Right. Yahweh knows the difference between real, true humility, which, by the way, just so happens to be in Yahshua the Messiah, along with, <laughs> this is why we need Yahshua so much, because all these attributes, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength, were locked up all in this body at one time. When he was walking around, folks, he was just waiting for the time when he could pour this out into somebody else's heart and mind. And that's exactly what he did, and he's still doing it. Mm -hmm. Pentecost, or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, has not stopped, folks. It's still going on, right? Did you find that, Dennis? First yeah. Corinthians 2.16. Read that. That's another doozy. 
For who hath known the mind of Yahshua? Now we're talking about having the mind of Yahshua. Who knew, who's known it? Who has known the mind of Yahweh? Of, of, of Yahweh, Yahweh. Of Yahweh right? right? Now we read tonight that the Messiah's testimony was is he can't do anything except what he sees the Father do. I can of my own self do nothing, he said. We have the exact same testimony. Right? We take our direction from him. And without him, we can't do anything right. on our own. It's worthwhile. Yeah. Now, uh, keep reading, Vicki. Now, who hath known, is that how, the way it starts? That's right. Who hath known the mind of Yahweh? That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Yahshua. Now, first of all, you're not going to instruct Yahweh. No more than you're going to bless yourself are you going to instruct Yahweh. See, the, the least is blessed of the greater. Did I say that right? The yes. less is blessed, blessed of the greater. If you're going to have a blessing, it's going to come from Yahweh because that's he's the greater and we're the lesser. Right. <laughs> we ain't going to get it from one another. Mm -mm. Now, who has known the mind of Yahweh? And what about instructing him? That he may instruct him. That he may instruct Yahweh. No. Folks, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. He's instructing us. Right. Because when we come in here, my testimony is, even though I was raised in a, in a, uh, a religion, I didn't know a thing about my creator before I, not anything definite and for sure that I could prove. And that I could be so confident in and that I could prove what I'm saying and not really worry about the consequences because when you know what you're talking about, you can just let the chips fall where they may. You hope that they're not falling on deaf ears because we take all questions here. We want you to know that, that we're not afraid to take them. And when we say we encourage questions, those are not just words, we mean them. Now, if I can't get the answer, I'll try to turn you on to somebody that can. Okay? And you can also be sure of this. And this, sh I would hope that this would be of some kind of comfort to you. I'm not making one up either. But see, what we do is, is that when we give you an answer to a question that you might have, and we all have questions, we hope that you'll do some investigation on your own to find out if what we're telling you is accurate or not. How do you know that what I'm telling you now, I'm trying to establish that it's in the book, whether it be in the Old Testament or the New, we can show adequate proof. Now, we're talking about having the mind or the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, first of all, how do you even get that? How do you become a recipient? Do you just wake up one morning and go like they tell you out in the world? Uh, I'm going to give you an example. This is pretty weird for a little Jewish kid now. I'll grant you that. But there was a period in my life when I was very downtrodden, and I was asking if there be a Jesus, like they were saying out in the world. Now, this is very unusual for a boy that went to Hebrew school. But this boy that went to Hebrew school was desperate. And desperate... Uh, a time's call for desperate measures, right? I mean, I was desperate. And I knew that I didn't really know anything, you know. Hardly knew anything enough to get a job to take care of myself, you know. And as far as knowing anything about Yahweh, didn't have time, never really gave it a thought, wasn't that interested. <laughs> but see, Yahweh knows how to hook somebody, interested or not. If he wants you, there's not too much you're going to do, you know, and you're going to be shouting happy that you met Yahweh too mm -hmm. because of what it is that Yahweh has to offer. See, he's the one that's given us something. We're not giving anything to him. There isn't anything that the book will tell you. There isn't anything we could give him. Mm -hmm. What we can actually give him is some glory that he is, the great creator and the savior of the world. We can, we can give him glory and credit when we know something. But when you don't know anything, like that was my testimony before I came in here. I didn't know anything about Yahweh, Jesus, or anybody else. Now, I can't make that testimony now. Mm -hmm. Nor do I want to. 
Uh, where were you reading? Jeremiah? No, we're done with that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.16. So who hath known the mind of Yahweh that he may instruct them? That's but, almost, if you think about it, it's almost cynical. I, I know the person that wrote it wasn't trying to be a wise guy, but there's no way that we're going to instruct Yahweh about anything. He's the instructor. We're the pupil or the student. Right. And we have just begun to scratch just the surface of, of Yahweh in the sense that we know, we, know some, we know something about him, but we don't know all there is to know, and nobody in this class that has half a brain would try to say that they know everything. Mm -hmm. You're never going to master Yahweh. Mm -mm. Remember what he is, and we say it all the time when we talk about that he is all the intelligence that there is. We're no match for that, folks. And nobody that you know is any kind of a match for this either. And there's more attributes than just intelligence. There's wisdom and knowledge and love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Now, that's a wonderful thing to have some of these attributes in us. That is. And that's Yahweh's gift to us, is himself. What better gift can you give, if you think about it, than you? You know? I mean, just from a natural standpoint, that's really what people are after. Although there are some people that give you little diamond rings and all that, but for the most part, most people are happy and glad to get a piece of you if you're, if you're willing to give it. Now, uh, let's see, Jeremiah 9.23, one more time. Because Yahshua was talking about receiving honor from men. And that's not what we're looking for, folks. That's not what we are here for. We are looking to receive the Holy Spirit or a knowledge and understanding and also all the rewards that come with it, such as eternal life. What is being offered here, really, is it's, it's very hard sometimes to even put it into words. Now, I posed the question earlier, how are you going to receive this? Where do you go to get Yahshua, this mind? What do you do, go down to, uh, to a store and, and say, do you have any Yash um, Yahshua's mind uh, left? No, I know that's stupid. But let me have 1 Corinthians, it pleased Yahweh. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, I believe. That's First Corinthians one and twenty one. Yeah, that sounds right. Start at twenty. All right, start at twenty. First Corinthians one and twenty. Now, earlier I posed the question, how are you going to get Yahshua's mind in you? And I also, I, if I didn't say it, I'm I'm saying it now. Why do you want it? What do you need it for? Yeah. Listen, down here, folks, if they wanted to escape death, the children of Israel, Yahweh gave them the... Uh, see, he had a, a ten plagues poured out on the land of Egypt. Actually. Now, all this stuff was written for our learning, by the way. That's what the book says. I'm not making this up. <coughs> all of the things that happened to Israel were written for our admonition. And one of the things you see back here is there's no getting out of Egypt without some lamb in you. Oh, my God. You couldn't have made it better like lobster? Well, you weren't allowed to have lobster. Remember? I couldn't have lobster. But here's, here's what I'm trying to get across. Yahshua's the lamb. He's the real lamb, of which this lamb was a, was a figure of them. Now, they were not going to escape the last plague of death without being, being partaking of the Lamb. Now, it's also true where we're at now, folks. You say, well, I don't see any uh, uh, plagues. You don't? You don't see any plagues going on in the world right now? You don't see that this world is plagued? Mm -hmm. And that we're living in some of the most trying times in history? 
right now? Mm -hmm. Come on, open your eyes and look. Take a look around. I mean, uh, the point I'm trying to make is you've got to have Yahshua in you in order to be saved. Now, they didn't even talk about being saved in the religion that I came from. I never heard it mentioned once, mm -hmm. salvation. Not once. They like to read the Bible, and I read along with them. If I wanted to have be confirmed at 13, I had to do what they said, right? Mm -hmm. But in terms of really learning anything that I could take with me, that, I, that would do me some good, I, I, I have to say that I didn't. I just was, I didn't see it. I didn't learn anything. Now, see, the Messiah wants you to learn of him. He doesn't want you to just blindly believe in something. That's not productive. It isn't going to do you any good. You have to know him for the way he really is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, it pleased Yahweh, it said, read on there. What? 1 Corinthians 1 and 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Mm -hmm. Hath not Yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm -hmm. For after that, in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh. Look, folks, if you want to be honest with yourself, did you really know Yahweh before you... I mean, that's a dumb question. But how do you know somebody before you meet them? You didn't know me before you met me, did you? No. Somebody had said, how's Bruce Keller doing? You would have said, who's he? Not if you hadn't met me, or you didn't know me, right? right? right. Now, I didn't know Yahweh from a hole in the wall. I, I truly didn't. And when I come down here, I had to take a seat and have somebody teach me. Now, this divine vision and revelation, folks, is what... Our founder claimed to have received. And to those of us that are sitting in this room, apparently it's been proven to your satisfaction that he saw something real, definite, and concrete, and can be witnessed and confirmed, and is doing you some good. Mm -hmm. Now, Yahweh takes great pleasure in you knowing him. Now, how do you know whether that's a true statement or not, Vicki? Do you just say, well, he looks like a, he's got an honest face. <laughs> As to whether I do or not, I'm just, I'm just saying. How do you know that me telling you that the creator is, is very happy when you know him? He's happy when he can reveal himself to you. And he's happy that you uh, 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 can see him for what he really is. How do you know that what I'm saying is right? I would never even have thought to ask that. I would have, if somebody had said that, and I was out in the audience, and they were talking about God, I would have scratched my head and gone, well, that sounds pretty good. I have a God that's that, he's pretty compassionate. He wants me to know him, right? But sh show it to me in the book. Then maybe I'll believe it. Maybe. Read Jeremiah 9.23, because now we, we find out that when Yahshua said, you receive not the love that cometh from Yahweh, the honor that cometh from Yahweh only, this is already talked about in the scriptures, in the Old Testament, long before the Messiah came in on the scene. Read Jeremiah 9.23. Well, I have to finish this sentence. All right, finish that sentence. It said, it pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching, preaching to say... Preaching what? This is what they would have you to... I'm going to tell you, give you a formula for what they do out in Christianity. And this is coming from a Jew. But because I know this, because it's happened to me. They, it just said in the book that it pleased Yahweh that through the foolishness of preaching that he might save some. Mm -hmm. Right? Save them that believe. My question is, is what are they preaching about? What are you preaching about? Read it again, Vicki. It at, pleased Yahweh. By the foolishness of preaching. Preaching what? I've never even heard of preaching before I came into school. Preaching? 
That was not a Jewish uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. That's exactly right. And I'm not making fun. I'm just telling you, sitting in a synagogue, you would never have heard anybody talk about preaching. Mm -hmm. That always had a Christian connotation in our minds as Jews. Because that's not how you uh, get along. What you do is you go to synagogue and you do what you're told, mm -hmm. basically. You sit there and then you go there on the Day of Atonement on Yom Kippur and you fast and you be a good little Jewish boy and everything will be all right. And if you treat everybody good, which by the way, I'm not trying to give a formula for treating anybody bad. Right. That's not a way to live, to treat people bad. But I'm saying if you think you're getting into heaven because you treat your fellow man good, that's not it. What it really comes down to, and we'll read about it in the book, is that you must believe in this one. This is our Savior, folks, right here. And guess what? He's the only one. And I know that that's hard to swallow. I know it is. Mm -hmm. You mean there aren't a whole lot of roads that lead to the same place, to heaven? Yahshua right. has talked about how that he was the way, the truth, and the life. That's singular, folks. There isn't. No man cometh unto the Father except by me, by Harry Houdini, <laughs> by Buddha. He said the only one that cometh to Yahweh, that's going to come to Yahweh, has got to come through him. Right. Just like the book says that he's the door. Now, if I had picked up a Bible in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and read the Messiah's testimony, which was, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Right? That wouldn't have meant a thing to me if I'd read that without having some foundation or some, some knowledge and understanding where, my, where I went back to where the Messiah instructed people to go back to, which was Moses. All right. What I'm going to do, I got my mind on so many different things. I really, and you know how it is sometimes. Um, I'd rather take questions than do this. But, not really. But um, I'm going to answer the question that I posed a minute ago, and then I'm going to sit down. I would want to know if someone told me and showed me in the book that in order to be a recipient of the Messiah spirit, you're going to have to hear something. First of all, what do you mean by that? I got great hearing. Just ask my wife, she'll tell you, when she's, especially when she's talking to me here in the football game. But uh, read, uh, so. We just read that it pleased Yahweh that through the foolishness of preaching, he was going to save some that believe. Right? Right. Read 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Because down here we are preaching something. We are preaching what we've been instructed to preach. When the Messiah, before he ascended into heaven, he gave instructions to his disciples and apostles and told them, if you get a chance, would you mind preaching? Did he say that? No. He said, go ye therefore and teach. See, preaching is another word for teaching. Mm -hmm. So preaching and teaching are, are very much the same thing. And it pleased Yahweh that through the foolishness of teaching or preaching that he might save some. And I pose the question, well, what is it that, that has to be preached in order for Yahweh to save some? 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. That's another word that had you asked me when I was going to synagogue, hey, how are you enjoying the gospel? You might as well have spoke to me in Portuguese, because gospel was another one of those words. That, that we, as, a, as a, a body, the Jews, didn't teach about the gospel. 
Uh-uh. No, that's more in the New Testament. But what gospel means, folks, is good news. Mm-hmm. Now, Yahweh, going all the way back to the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, promised mankind that there was going to be a Savior that was going to help mankind, was going to take him out of his dilemma. You say, well, what dilemma was that? The same dilemma that we walked in this door with. We were dead on arrival. Now, what do you mean by that? See, everything has to be broken down and explained. Let me have Romans 8 and 6. I know I'm calling for a lot of scriptures, but I have to tell you, try to get this across, what it is that we're saying down here. What we're preaching, what we're teaching down here. And by the way, it didn't come from our heads. I can't take credit for this. This came from a divine vision revelation given unto our founder. Now, when he received that in 1931, he said, I don't want you to believe it. When has anybody, when it came to religion, ever said anything like that to you that I don't want you to believe it? To the contrary, they want you to believe everything that's coming out of their mouths when it comes to religion. And the thing that they tell you, and I may have forgotten to mention this earlier, is that their gospel is that Jesus died for you, Dennis, and you should believe that. That's basically what Christianity's gig is, for lack of a better word. You need to believe on Jesus, sister, and if you do, you will be saved. Believe on Jesus based on what would be my question. Now, I wouldn't have had the intelligence to even ask that before I came into class. I would have just felt probably figured I was, I'm caught here now. How do I get out of this? You know? But Yahweh is always giving witnesses examples of himself so you don't have to just believe out of thin air. You can really know something for definite and for sure. What did I have you call? Because a million scriptures are coming to my head and I can't uh, call them all. Romans 8 and 6. Read that. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnal just means one thing, folks. Because I know that when I came into class, there was a movie going on called Carnal Knowledge. And I thought, well, carnal must have something to do with sex. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the movie was Mm -hmm. very sexy, you know, and Mm -hmm. had uh, my favorite stars in it and all that. You know, but that's not what carnal means. Carnal just means not spiritual. That's the best definition If you stick with that definition, you'll be right on. It's not spiritual. Now, none of us walked into this class spiritually minded, folks. You know why? Because we didn't know anything. And burning in, we could have burned incense until it burned a hole in our pocket. That wasn't being spiritual. Now, Yahshua, we just had this read at the last class. Yahshua told those people back there that the time is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And Dennis, you just worked with that the other night about how do you worship him in spirit and in truth, right? Well, everybody has a concept for that too. Mm -hmm. If I burn enough incense, maybe that's being spiritual. Or whatever your idea of being spiritual is. But one thing is for sure, you are not going to worship Yahweh without having his spirit in you. Because he said you have to worship him. Unless he didn't know what he was talking about, he said you've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And last I checked, Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. Right. He's also the teacher. Mm -hmm. He's also, by the way, the comforter. Yes. In fact, he really truly is the one-man band that that the founders say he was. He's a one-man band. He's a comforter. He's a rest. He's our Sabbath. We could go on and on. Do they have such a class that make you stay uh, stay on the same train of thought for a while? If they do, I need to to get some lessons on that. Because sometimes your mind just has a tendency to fly when you're up here because you have so many things that you want to impart. But there's a way to do that so that you don't, uh, you know, you could stay on a line. Now read Jeremiah 9.23 and then I'll get down. 
Thus saith the high and lofty one, or thus saith Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. There ought to be something I could take credit for as a man, isn't there? Wait a minute. I'm told not to glory in my might. Well, good, because I ain't got none anyway, right? Don't glory in your own wisdom. Well, right. we like to think we're very wise, don't we? Don't glory in it. Don't make any big deal out of it. Don't think you're hot, you know what, because you might have some wisdom. Mm -hmm. that's, not See, that's not the kind of wisdom we're after, folks, is worldly wisdom, is it? No. no. Now, this is the wisdom that he promised us. And wisdom just so happens to be one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he promised us to give us this Holy Spirit. And you know what, folks? I'm going to cut it up real short because i only got two minutes. Matthew eleven twenty seven. I said earlier that Yahweh really enjoys, enjoys it when you... He gets off on you knowing him. And you know what? He is our husband. We ought to be concerned about what makes him happy, you know? Or wife. You know, oh, somebody would automatically take that as a sexist statement, you know? That's not the way that it's meant to be. It's just that he said himself that I, I'm your husband, right? right? And he's a good husband, too. He provides. He's a provider. And that's what he was known as back here before he gave his name to Moses. He was known as El Shaddai, which means almighty, almighty provider. Now read that, Jeremiah 9.23. Thus saith Yahweh. No, you said you called for Matthew. Yeah, okay. Matthew 11.27. Mm -hmm. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and to and Both, he there's no other place to go to receive eternal life than this one. He's the only one that has it to give. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Your rabbi doesn't have it, your pastor doesn't have it, your priest doesn't have it. Yahshua has it. He said that it says there that we just read that. No man knows the Father except the Son. Well, then who do you have to go to? You've got to go to the Son if you want to learn something about the Father, right? right? You have to go to Him. Now, read on real quick. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. All right, so Yahshua does reveal unto us, but what I wanted was learn of me. Did I miss that? Is that down a ways? Okay, it's in the book where Yahshua said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, learn of me, folks. He wants you to know him. Now, he's not going to ask you to learn of me, and then you have no way to know anything about him. That's ridiculous. Remember, one of his attributes is justice. Where is it? There it is. Right there. He's just, right? He's not going to tell you that he delights in you knowing him, and then he had completely blinds you from ever knowing him. No, it doesn't work that way. But anyways, I hope you got something out of what was said. I know it was kind of scattered, but we got a lot to offer and a lot to give. And we, like I said, we encourage questions. If you don't get an answer the first time, keep on asking. I'll do my best to answer it. If I can't, I'll lead you to somebody that can. But we want you to feel... Uh, just completely free and easy and able to ask your questions without feeling embarrassed or I don't know anything, I'm afraid to ask them. Don't be like that. When it comes to Yahweh, we're here for you and we're here for, for us too because every time we come to class, we get something out of it. If you put something into it, you'll get something out of it. Thank you for your attention. I'll turn it over to the next speaker.
evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to be here. Uh, it's good to be able to know something about the Creator as He really is and actually exists. And we hear that often and forget how profound that really is. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to the scripture reading. And I want you to just put that up there. John, where was it? Five? Five, Five starting at 17. You got it? Mm -hmm. John 5, 17. But Yahshua answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Yahweh was his father. Now, when Yahshua was on the earth plane, and we have learned since being here that Yahshua's purpose for coming in the flesh was not to start a Christian way of life. Mm -hmm. uh, he got baptized so people think we should get baptized. He had the Lord's Supper so we should do that. That we should follow in his footsteps. In reality, he came in to fulfill the long, uh, fulfill the old covenant, which was given to the Jews back here at Mount Sinai 1,500 years before he came in that sacrificial body. Mm -hmm. And the ordinances that we practice in Christianity, uh, the ceremonies, the baptisms, the suppers, uh, and many, many more. The Ten Commandment Law was a law that was given to the nation of Israel only. Mm -hmm. It was never given uh, uh, to an Italian. Mm -hmm. It was never given to uh, uh, a Roman. It was never given, I'm trying to remember what country trees were around, <laughs> it was never given to the Ethiopian to the Ethiopian or British or anything else mm -hmm. or the American Indians mm -hmm. for the Mormons there mm -hmm. um, that it was given to the Jews and the Jews only. That's right. So all of these practices in Christianity, the physical ways of worship, were never given to a Christian. And in fact, he came in that uh, uh, sacrificial body to move those carnal ordinances and physical ways of worship out of the way so that he could usher in an age of grace or uh, uh, a new covenant. Uh, let's just real quick, for some reason we're here. Um, Just give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, 31. Mm -hmm. We're just backtracking a little bit here. 31, 31 of Jeremiah. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them. Now, that's really all I want, that the new covenant that comes into effect will not be like the old covenant. And the old covenant had these physical ways of worship that the Messiah fulfilled or brought to an end. So in a nutshell, in a two-minute explanation, which could be a two-day explanation or a two-year explanation, right then and there you have to recognize that for me, I drew, uh, grew up in Christianity, unlike Bruce, 
But all that I was taught to do in Christianity to please my creator was wrong. Now that's huge. Hmm. Yeah. I guess so. If you care about worshiping your creator, John 4.24 says that you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. And the truth of the matter is we never knew the truth. Mm -hmm. right. Right. We never even knew his name was Yahweh right. or that his son's name or the Holy Spirit, his name was Yahshua, not Jesus. And Yahweh, instead of God, do you understand? We didn't even know his name, right? right? Let alone what his purpose and plan was. See? Now, start again with the scripture reading. John, I lost it. 5 and 17. But Yahshua answered them, My father worketh hitherto when I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with Elohim. Now, the Jews, the, the priests at the time, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, those were different sects of the Jewish uh, uh, religion, followed him around trying to followed Yahshua around trying to catch him up or trying to catch him in an error. They wanted to discredit him in the eyes of the people. Mm -hmm. see? So they were on him because he healed the man on the Sabbath day. See? Mm -hmm. And so they're trying, do you understand, to accuse him of breaking the law. Yeah. And hopefully what we'll get to is that he himself was the law. Right. And here they're going up to the law, telling the law that he broke the law. Well, that just doesn't happen. See? And they were on him because he said what about him and the Father? They were one. Read it for me there. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Elohim was his father, making himself equal with Elohim. Making himself, and what you read in the King James is God, making himself equal with God. Mm. And right. that didn't fly. <laughs> right. See? And to this day, the Jews do not believe that God can come in a corporeal state or has not, see. But in, in, in fact, he did, see. Yeah. Now watch, uh, um, keep reading there. 19, then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. Now the Son cannot do anything except what he sees the Father do. Read. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Now, what the Son does is what the Father does, and what the Father does is what the Son does. Right. And they didn't like that because they said, how can you call yourself God? Right. See? Read. Mm -hmm. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Now, uh, go over to, um, let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter, and pick that up at 25. Acts 17 and 25. Neither is worshipped with men's hands. <laughs> so he needed anything. Is, to start up. Yahweh that made the world. Yeah. 24th verse. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, 
dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now watch. Uh, hold on to that and go over and get me John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. Now, if you uh, were here for the moderation, you heard the moderator say that this cloud, uh, uh, around this cloud is this uh, uh, fiery cloud. Around the chart is this right. fiery cloud. Mm -hmm. And that this represents Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now, John 4, 24, we already quoted it, and that is that God, or Yahweh, is spirit. Right. Spirit cannot be detected with your natural senses. Unlike the Ghostbusters that had a, 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 some sort of machine. What was it? Paraphernalia. Para Various a paranormal paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> that would go off when they supposedly there was a spirit. Right. And then they could suck the spirit into this it's vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner <laughs> to get rid that's not the kind of spirit we're talking about. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it made a good movie though. Yeah. So spirit can't be sucked in by a vacuum cleaner. Spirit mm -hmm. is abstract to your natural senses. You understand? And yet, well, start John 1 and 1 again. In the beginning was the word. Now, in the beginning of creation, mm -hmm. there was a word. See? Now, uh, when Moses, Aaron, uh, uh, well, I think you got to go back. When the children of Israel came up out of Egypt, uh, uh, after the sacrifice of the lamb and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, and the whole nation came here to Mount Sinai, and uh, Yahweh uh, uh, pictured himself as a cloud, uh, led them up out of Egypt and settled here on Mount Sinai. And when they came up, Moses uh, uh, was invited up here to Mount Sinai. Uh, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel came here at the midpoint of the mountain. In John 4, 24, you read that he looked up. They looked up on top of the mountain, and they saw God. And they described him as having hands, feet, and a body. But it was a body of heaven in its clearness. It was not a physical body. It was as it were, a ghost-like shape and form. You understand? Now, when John was over here on the Isle of Patmos, he also saw a shape and form that he called the Son of Man. And this also was not a physical body. You understand? Uh, uh, as he described it here, uh, with uh, head and hair uh, like uh, wool mm -hmm. and uh, his feet in flame of fire and the golden caps around his center, uh, mm -hmm. uh, center section. And when uh, he spoke, you understand, uh, it, it was as water. Now, what he saw up here, you understand, was a ghost-like shape and form, see? The same with uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, where they are uh, at the uh, uh, Mount of Transfiguration with Yahshua, and Yahshua uh, arose up and, uh, I'll just put it this way, just took off his physical body. And what was in there, they saw this, as it were, ghost-like shape and form. Now, down <coughs> through the Law and the Prophets, you'll read uh, almost everywhere, see? Uh, you go into Jeremiah, and you'll read that the word came unto Jeremiah, or the word came unto Ezekiel, 
or the word came unto Isaiah. Now, I'm not going to pull all the verses. You just need to go in there and see that. Mm -hmm. So when we read in the beginning was this word, mm -hmm. that word is that incorporeal shape and form seen here, seen on the Isle of Patmos, right. seen at the uh, wow. Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Paul saw it uh, when uh, uh, he had his vision. Do you understand? Uh, and this is called the Word. And it was that Word who came to all of the prophets and those in the law. Understand? This is the one that Moses spoke to at the burning bush. You yeah. understand? This is the one that uh, 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 Noah saw and spoke to here before uh, the flood. It's the one that woke up Jonah out of his, do you understand, malaise on where he was supposed to be. Yeah. And uh, when he had that turnaround uh, in the fish and decided he should do what was right. Huh. What I'm trying to tell you is that this word that Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu saw in the beginning was this word. Read. Two. The same was in the beginning with, with uh, Elohim. Stop. Yeah, start right from the beginning. In the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with Yahweh. Now, this word was with Yahweh. And that Yahweh, being that spirit, that word was with Yahweh. Read. And the word was Yahweh. And this word was. The word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Yeah. Let me say it again. It was with Yahweh, and it was. It wasn't a different person. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It was. Read. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. Now all things were made by this word. That's why in Genesis it says, do you understand? And the creator said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And he said, let the light be divided from the darkness. Yep. And he said, let the waters above from the water. Do you understand? He spoke in the word created this creation and the angelic creation. That's right. Now that's this word. Right. See? Yeah. Read on. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Read. In him was life. In him was life. And straight out, he is life. Right. Read. And the life was the light of men. And that life is synonymous with light. And that life was the light of men. Now, read 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among now, us. Now, this selfsame word that was seen mm -hmm. by prophets and apostles mm -hmm. and Moses, do you understand? Yeah. And all down through the law, this word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Right. Mm -hmm. This was not a different being. Right. It was this word made flesh. Right. So this was spirit. This took on a physical body. That's why the book reads that these three are one. Right. These three do not just agree in one. These three are one. Mm -hmm. The perfect example 
Life cannot exist on this planet without water. And you have to have the sun. But water, your body is like 70% water. And the earth plane is like 70% water. You got to have water. Why is there a 70% water? Why is it so, do you understand, uh, 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 prevalent? Right. Thank you. Yeah. See? Because it is the perfect example of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. Because you have a molecule called H2O. Right. And in its gaseous state, that would liken unto this cloud, which is Yahweh. Now that exact same H2O, you don't go outside and bring back in some different H2O. The exact same H2O slows itself down. See? Mm -hmm. As my husband would say, it cuddles together <laughs> because the molecules as they get cooler get closer together uh -huh. and it slows the activity down now that exact same H2O in its liquid form we call water it was Yahweh. It was that steam. No difference. Just look, cuddled closer together. Just slowed itself down. Now that exact same H2O molecule, when it gets colder, gets closer knit together. And when it's really at its slow uh, state, we call it ice or solid form. Mm -hmm. It is the same H2O, whether it, it, it's a vapor, whether it's liquid, or whether it's a, a solid, whether it's abstract, intermediate, or concrete, it is absolutely the same. That's why in this school we do not teach a trinity. Because your book reads that Yahweh, our Elohim, is one, not a trinity. Right. Just like you have a head cavity, a chest cavity, an abdominal cavity that makes you up, that's just one person. It's one body. It's not like something else or uh, uh, an example of it is one, period. Mm -hmm. When you come into existence, when uh, uh, the sperm penetrates that egg, you understand? Uh, and in, in that cloud-like shape, see, all of the DNA, everything you're going to be is right there. Mm -hmm. Now that exact same fertilized egg comes through the fallopian tubes, down into the womb, and that child begins to grow. And after 40 weeks, coming out of the womb, and then uh, uh, you have yourself a baby. But it has not changed in its substance. The shape of the substance changed, the form of the substance changed to suit the process. Mm -hmm. So when this changed form, mm -hmm. it was because there was a purpose to perform. Mm -hmm. The purpose was birth. And it didn't have, there was do you understand that uh, uh, initial uh, 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 penetration that caused the multiplications of cells to begin? But it didn't, you still needed more. 
It's just not one time push, you're done. And you take a little blob on a, on a, on a what do they call it, you, on a piece of glass and take that home, put it in your crib. <laughs> no. no not, not that it's just one. It, do you understand? Yeah. There's a process that has to go from an abstract to intermediate to concrete. But it is not three different people. It is only one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's why this is the perfect example of the God. Do you understand? There is only one. Now, the Jews are all on Yahshua because he said, when you see me, you see the Father. And I can't do anything but what the Father has dictated me to do. Now, look it. When this egg is fertilized by that sperm, everything that you're going to be is right there. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, in the process of birth, everything that happens from that point on is dictated by what was laid up in that cloud. Mm -hmm. Now, everything that went on before the process began has already been laid up in spirit. The purpose has been laid up. And as it begins its development. Yes, that's right. See? It's already been predetermined up here in the clouds, same way as your DNA. Yep, See? True. So read over here in John. Pick up a little bit. Why not pray from the start? Now, what do you want me to get? The scripture reading. I know, but what part? Right at the beginning. But Yahshua answered them. What, where are you, Vic? John 5, 17. Thank you. My father worketh hitherto when I work. Mm -hmm. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Yahweh was his father, making himself equal with Yahweh. Now do you know why he can say he was equal? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. Now, the Son can do nothing else than what has been dictated in the cloud. Do you understand that now? Mm -hmm. He's not talking to a different person. Right. right. He is demonstrating that up here, do you understand, uh, uh, in that DNA, all he can do, do you understand, it is progress or uh, go through that birth as dictated by that DNA. So the son, Yahshua, mm -hmm. has to follow the purpose which is dictated up here in the cloud before it ever starts. So he is subject to the Father. Right. Yes, that's true. Now that does not mean that Father is, is one part of something up at sun, moon, and stars, and then Yahshua comes and he is something else, and he keeps talking to this other person, the Father. He's talking about the purpose laid up. That is his Father. Go ahead, Mary. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. You can't, he, the purpose is laid off. The DNA is in there, so he's got to do what the Father has dictated. Yeah. Read. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself does. Now, the Father loveth the Son. There is nine divine attributes in spirit, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And that is what this word is made up of. But those nine divine attributes came from the Father. That is the love that Yahshua received from the Father because he is made up do you understand? Of this 
discourse in substance. But it couldn't be seen until he slowed himself down mm -hmm. in a describable and descriptive shape and form. And then he came in the physical body. And said, I can't do anything but what the Father told me, and he loves me. Mm -hmm. He gave me himself, which is love. Go mm -hmm. ahead. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Great. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, it's already committed. Yahshua cannot even receive anyone unless the Father give it to him, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. But I want you to see there's not a big old man pulling the strings up there. Mm -hmm. We're talking about what the purpose is dictated before the beginning of time. Go ahead. That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. Yes, read. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Now, if you can see that when he came in that physical body, you understand? That it was the Father. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have a shot at eternal life. Isn't that what it says? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. I'm going to read that again. Okay. Verily, so, verily, hang, I say... Hang on there, I'm sorry. And just get John 17 and, and 3, and we'll okay. confirm that. John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. Now, you can't walk around and just say, I know God. I know God. I was up at the church on February 6th, 1997 and I fell to my knees and I knew I received the Holy Spirit and that by the way was, was about at 203 p.m. Mm -hmm. They can tell That's you to the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he said you shall not know the time of year. <laughs> you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. right. Now I go ahead and read that lost me. All right. Uh, we just read that what life eternal was. So this is life eternal, mm -hmm. that you might know him and Yahshua, okay. Messiah, right. whom thou hast sent. Read mm -hmm. it the way it is in there. I butchered it. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim. That they might know thee. The only true Elohim, or the only true God, read. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. It was the purpose that sent him. Just like it was the, the uh, makeup of the DNA that sent this uh, uh, child into the womb. Yeah. yeah. Attached to the placenta. Yeah. And it was the purpose that sent them, that child out after that 40 weeks. It was all dictated. Mother didn't decide it. Mm -mm. The baby didn't decide it. Mm -mm. The father didn't decide it. Yeah. Nobody decided it. Mm -mm. It was laid up. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And then people want to get all upset if you suggest they don't have will. Well, you tell me, did you have free will as to what family you were born in? No. Nothing to do with it. When you were born? No. Did you have free will about your Nothing. stature and the color of your hair and, and your uh, 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 capacity of intellect? Did you, did you decide on that? No. Not a fact. I think if we decided, we would have been stupid enough to say, I want to be the smartest, the brightest, the prettiest, and I want to have all the money and power. That's right. 
Well, if you have free will, yeah. why doesn't everybody have that? Yeah. See? True. But this is eternal life to know him. But to know him as he actually is and truthfully exists. Mm -hmm. You understand? There's a big difference. Okay, now go ahead there, Vicki. 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh. Now, the hour comes when the dead will hear the voice of Yahweh. Now watch. Israel, who was under that sin of this old covenant, when they broke law, it was sin. And for many of the sins, there was a penalty of death. Yeah. And in uh, John or Peter, it says you break one, you've broken them all. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. They were dead. Mm -hmm. All of Israel was dead when they came to John the Baptist to be baptized. They were dead in their sins. Yeah. And John did just exactly what he was told to do. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with a dead person? Bury him. You bury him. But when they came up out of the water, they were still dead. They had to wait for Yahshua to resurrect them up. Yeah. You understand this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Read. Back up the, the, uh, the sentence you were on. I'm sorry? That was the sentence. I'm sorry. Um, um, Vero, okay. Five and one. The hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh, and they that hear shall live. Now, the day will come when those will hear the word of Yahweh, and they shall live. They shall hear the word, and they shall live. Right. See? Didn't the Messiah, do you understand? This is the word. And it, this word is the one that created heaven and earth in the flesh. It is the self-same word that will bring you to life who were dead in your sins, or, as uh, 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 Bruce already talked about, is to be carnally minded is death. Say, well, I never followed any Christian concepts. Well, fine. You were still dead. Okay. You were still carnally minded. You didn't have a clue about the Creator. You didn't know anything about the operation of the Godhead, which is the operation of spirit. Do you understand? Yeah. You didn't know anything about spirit. Right. No. Not a thing. So you were dead. Right. In your sins and in your carnal way of thinking. Dead. You had a soul in there that just was Lost as it could be. Yes. Being dictated, see, by the mystery of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yeah. Any whim that you, do you understand? We felt yeah. like, well, I tried to be moral. Yeah, you were moral until it was just tempting mm -hmm. enough not to be. Exactly right. Yep, that's about right. Or there was a reward that was greater than to be honest. Do you understand? Yeah, that's right, too. We were dead. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that can save us is this word. Okay. Uh, real quick, just as I gather here, get me uh, uh, John 15, 1. I think it's 1 through 3. John 15. I am the true vine. 
and my father is the husbandman. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean now, through the word. We are clean, how? Through the word. Through the word. Which I have spoken unto Which you. I have spoken. And I got to tell you, the word is truth. He say, didn't the Messiah say, I am the way? Yes, uh, the I truth and the life. The truth, the truth. and the life, or yeah. the light. Why? Because right. right here, I am the way, do you understand, the truth and the life. And he came in that physical body. you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, truth is in the world this night. Truth is in the world this night. And you don't have to wait for some horrific event to happen for you to receive truth. Everybody in the world is waiting, 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 waiting for them to step, jump out of the clouds, waiting for something to happen, waiting for some big catastrophe. Everybody's waiting for something to happen to clean up this mess. Well, Nothing's going to clean up this mess of the world, but there's something that can clean up your mess. Right. See? And the thing that can clean up your mess is the truth. Now, I want to go over to um, Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46, in, um, 9 and 10. Is it in Malachi where he says I changed that? Yeah, 3 and 8. 3 I think, and 8. I think. Let's, Let's see. Let's get that one. First. You want that first? And um, go over there in Revelation. I am Alpha and Omega. Okay. Uh, Malachi 3 and 6. For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, we're just going to add a layer to this. Now watch. We have found out something about the Godhead, something about the Father, and the purpose that dictates the every move of Yahshua the Messiah and you and I. Now watch. Uh, um, oh, I can't go there yet. Um, <laughs> hang on to everything. We still have uh, Acts 17 waiting. Yeah, we didn't get into 28 yet. Did yeah, we? let's go back there. Okay. I have to take a step back. It's all right. Acts 17 and 28. Mm -hmm. For in him we live and move and have our being. Now, this... Yahweh, this spirit, see, it, uh, uh, can you back that up a little bit to 24 or 23? 24. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein. Now, here we go. We've got Paul uh, uh, talking to the uh, intellects on Mars Hill. And he wants to talk to them about the unknown God, the God they know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Now, unknown doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. It means you don't know about it. Yeah. Right. See, people go, there can't be only one way to heaven. That's not fair. Yeah. There is only one way to heaven, and it's very fair. It's just you don't know anything about it. Go ahead and read. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now, if you're going to find out something about your creator right away, he said he 
does not dwell in temples made with hands. Read. As though he needed anything, mm -hmm. seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, mm -hmm. and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Now, he's created all. Read. And hath determined the times before appointed. Now look it. He has determined our times. Read. And the bounds of their habitation. And he's our limits and bounds. Read. That they should seek Yahweh, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Now, this is what I wanted to get to, is that we talked about uh, 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 Yahweh, and then we, we talked about the word Yahweh Elohim, and then we talked about that word coming in this physical body, Yahshua. Now I want to get you in the picture. See? Now, uh, uh, reread what you just read. That they should seek Yahweh. Now, if you should seek after truth, if you should seek after Yahweh, read. If haply they might feel after him mm -hmm. and find him, mm -hmm. Though he be not far from every one now, of us. Now, here we go. Everybody has got God or the Father up there. And we talked something about what that Father really is. See? Now, uh, uh, if you want to know something about the truth, if you want to know something about your Creator, he be not far from any one of you. Right. And don't tell me you don't think or didn't think that God was far away from you. And that's why you went to church so you could feel close to him. Yep. That's right. Well, if you felt close to him all the time, do you understand? You went to church because you were either forced to go or you were desperate to find answers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. For in him we live and move and have our being. Now, this is what I want you to see, is that right within this spirit, which encompasses everything that there is, there is nothing outside of spirit. He's our limits, he's the bounds of all things. And we live, move, and have our being within him or within spirit. So you're already there. Mm -hmm. It's not like you got to pack a bag and get somewhere. You're there. Mm -hmm. Problem is you never knew where you were. See? Now we got you in this uh, uh, out or uh, in spirit, and you live, move, and have your being in spirit, and uh, as it reads on there, uh, and even as your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. Mm -hmm. Now, here we are. So the first thing you need to know is where you are. Mm -hmm. Now, the next question you should ask is, where do I, where am I going? What's the progression mm -hmm. Do you of mm -hmm. my salvation? Mm -hmm. Because we've seen the progression that Spirit took to save the Jews, to fulfill the law and the prophets, and to usher in an age of grace. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, there was something that happened to Paul on the way uh, 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 wherever he was going. <laughs> to Damascus. Damascus, thank you. <laughs> I had it in my head. That's right. Something that happened to Paul on the way to Damascus. And something that very special happened on the day of Pentecost. And I want you to go over there in Acts, the second chapter. And I want you to see, when I went to church, I never even heard of a day of Pentecost. Never in my church there wasn't even a feast of Pentecost or other people have that. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Easter and you had Christmas and Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. They made a deal out of Mother's Day. All the ladies would get a rose. Uh -huh. 
all the mothers. And one of my most embarrassing moments in ch it was when I, I don't know how old I was, I had to be awfully young, and they had the kids passing out roses to the mothers. Well, I was too young to know what was a mother and what wasn't a mother. Mm -hmm. And I'm just passing them. They said, pass them to the ladies. So I'm just, and they're laughing because evidently I'm just passing them to Everybody. who knows who. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other 12, you know, 12 year olds or something. But it was a big deal. That was a big holiday. Passover, that was just Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. The day of Pentecost, I never even heard of. <laughs> now, Remember, we had John the Baptist at the River Jordan with those folks who were dead in their sins, and he was burying them in the water, right? Yes. Now, as we said also, they were buried in the water, uh, but John did not have the uh, 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 power to resurrect them up. And in our scripture reading, it talks about that Yahshua can raise, uh, that greater works we would do than raising from the dead. Now watch. John raised him up. See? Our, uh, John couldn't yep. raise them up. Right. Only Yahshua could. See? And he went through his death his burial, his resurrection, and then 53 days later, there were 120 people gathered in an upper room, and something happened. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that for me. Uh, it's Acts. Acts 2 and 1. You got it? No. Okay, Acts 2 and 1. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Mm -hmm. They were all in one accord. They were all one with place. one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now, I want you to see something. That Yahshua, when he fulfilled this old covenant, off of the back of the Jews, he rolled, as it says in Exodus, the reproach of Egypt off of them. So that he, do you understand, took on their sin, took on uh, uh, the death of the sin. So they were dead, they were buried, and then Yahshua did something oh so special. He took them up there in the, in the uh, upper room, and what happened? Uh, let's see. And, there, uh, and then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. He and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, look at this one that we call the Word, that is a ghost-like shape and form, do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who has a heavenly body. Do you understand? Yeah. This is the word. And that word came and was made or put in that physical body. See? It was holy. And it was a ghost. Yeah. Do you understand? Right. Now, that's what came in Yahshua. And when he died, he resurrected a quickening spirit, not a physical body, so that, do you understand, he was the head and he resurrected up first. And uh, uh, so then the body comes after and they're in the upper room and there's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is not a dove who is the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? It was Yahshua himself who was the Holy Spirit, not in a physical body, but the Holy Spirit in them, and that's what resurrected them up out of that life after he fulfilled. Now you as Christians have never been under this law. Do you understand? But you need to hear the truth as we read.
read in John that by this word of truth, that will clean you up and bring you, do you understand? Mm -hmm. To a point of blood, not carnally minded, but spiritually minded. So if you make yourself subject to the truth, that's what's going to clean you up. Do you understand? And it is that Holy Spirit placed in you as you sit right there on the chair. And he reveals his truth to you. Do you understand? That is the Holy Spirit in you recognizing that truth. Now you and I and all must follow the dictates of the purpose. And this purpose he will not change. He has declared the end right from the beginning. And he cannot change that which is already in motion. And his purpose all the way down has been to take those that were dead, your dead soul, and to resurrect them unto life. To resurrect them unto life. All the way down through the law of the prophets. And he changes not. If he has stopped resurrecting from the dead, then you have no hope. Don't take away their hope. There's no hope. This is the way the process works. That's right. Dictated from the Father. And you can't change it. No. And you can't make people think it's changed now. No. Your soul needs to be saved the same way everybody else's has been saved. That's right. You have to be brought from a state of death unto life. And the only one that has the ability to bring somebody from life unto death is the one that has life himself. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are saying that there is no resurrection of the spirit or uh, uh, the salvation of a soul, then you you don't have the the life to do it. No. Paul tells us that this gospel has the power to resurrect you. On it has the power to save your soul. That's right. And we're just Stupid enough to believe. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. So with that, we're out of time. And thank you. Let's all rise for the theology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs>